I want to share about my horrible day yesterday. At around 9 o'clock in the morning, everything had been fine and normal up to then. And then I got a sudden pancreatitis attack. And they go from zero of like, if you're fine walking around, to 10 in a second. I, oh my gosh, it hurt so bad. I was screaming. I was going to like change my clothes for some reason, like getting out of my pajamas or something like that. And then I went into the bathroom and it started and I could not move. I was in a ball like this, um, just like stuck in half. And I was screaming and moaning for a while. My mom gave me multiple medications to try. Um, I couldn't really talk because the pain was so bad I couldn't get words out and it was it was so bad. I always say that it feels like gallstones when I have a pancreatitis attack and because I have um, chronic pancreatitis, it's not acute pancreatitis and also exocrine pancreatic insufficiency and like it got so bad. My mom was giving me some um, oral meds, um, antispasmodics. Um, we tried like some benzos because thinking maybe like calming spasms because those help with my seizures. So maybe we're, we're thinking that. Um, not that it was a seizure, but thinking to try that. And then I felt like I was going to pass out. I needed cold, like on both of my wrists, on the back of my neck and on my feet. My body felt so hot and we didn't have power. So, um, we didn't have much cold things to think to do. I gave myself a shot of Toradol. I'll show you where that... it bruised because, um, apparently Toradol shots burn a lot. I didn't know that because I mostly do them through my port, but I was on access yesterday because I was done with IVIG. Um, no, I'm sorry, ketamine. So after a while of screaming and in pain, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't move like my legs out of the position. It would hurt my stomach. It would, it just, it, oh my gosh, it hurts so bad. It's like this crushing pain. Um, I told my mom, like, and I was, like, trying to write a notepad, and I told my mom, you need to go to the hospital, you need to go to the hospital, and, um, yeah, called the ER. They were very nice, um, the ambulance people. Again, I was just screaming in the bathroom, and I don't know what anyone looked like because my eyes were just closed. I was in so much pain and I was just trying to concentrate on breathing and, and not being tense because my stomach was already so tense doing all this stuff. Um, they carried me down the stairs and into the ambulance and they couldn't give me pain meds because they couldn't until we got there. Um, due to the virus, they would not let my mom stay with me. Now, I get this for like, if I was able to talk and I had something, but I was just treated so horribly. They were like, nope, you can't do, nope, you can't do this. They were trying to like put the blood pressure on this arm and I'm like, can't tell them that I can't, this is an arm limb restriction. I need like, medical tags and then they were they were like fighting us that that's not true that's not true you don't need that i'm like just do my darn blood pressure on the left side and then you know about to give me like different tapes on that i was allergic to and i can't tell them that because i couldn't talk i was so out of breath and so deep in pain that i was just trying to like 
get through it. I couldn't have a conversation. They didn't let my mom come no matter what she said. And she, they got the supervisor to come in and they sent me to the pediatric area. And, which is weird because I'm 23, but sometimes if there's more room over there, they'll do that. And I still didn't see these people, but there were, I don't know if they were nurses or PAs, probably nurses. Um, one male and one female or two female came in multiple times and my mom wasn't there. I didn't have anyone to, to speak for me, to say what I'm feeling. They're asking me, why are you here? What are you feeling? Da -da -da. I'm like, I am bunched over in pain, screaming. I cannot answer you right now. Like, I told my friend, do you expect someone who got hit by a train to like be having a conversation when they're in trauma? I don't think so. And I'm screaming and I'm in a ball, not moving. And then someone else would come in and they got mad at me. They were like, why are you not talking? You need to tell us, speak, talk to us, da da da. Why, why won't you tell us anything? I'm like, oh my God, I'm in so much pain. That's why I needed my mom to advocate for me because I can't speak. There's been times where I thought I was nonverbal autistic coming into the ER because of how severe my symptoms looked and they thought that was like my normal. And it was like, I, I couldn't speak to them. I couldn't communicate with them. I was in so much pain and I didn't have pain meds and they didn't know any history about me. They could go on their computers and see things, but they don't check the computers to see my history. So they wouldn't do that. I'm like, what's wrong with these people? Like, uh, they finally, after like three people coming in and yelling at me and saying, well, why isn't she talking? Why aren't you this? Why aren't you talking? Why are you being so difficult? And this and that, but they moved me up to a higher like level of the ER where you're like closer to the nurse's station and like more care is the best way to put it. And then they finally let my mom come in because I couldn't do anything for myself. I couldn't speak and say, this is what's hurting. This is what's this. Sometimes I could say some things. Other times this situation was not. And they were so mean to me. I got a lot of fentanyl highest like grade pain medication it's higher than morphine they told me and after that set in I started to I guess I call it wake up but I wasn't sleeping I was just like not moving at all and just like and moaning and screaming once and then I was able to whisper a little bit and then I could sit back a little, I could whisper a little bit, I could talk a little bit. They were not listening to me. They were just not listening to me. They were not listening to my mom once my mom finally got in. You know, the nurse that I had there was really nice and although she did, I had five they tried five times to get an IV. They got it on the fifth time um, in the vein that I told them that works the best, but they, she didn't, she wanted to try the other ones, but I was right with that. And I'm like, I know my veins, I know my body, but she was just super nice. And it was like, thank God. And we were telling her things. And then the fentanyl wore off and I started like getting all uh, again. And I had two more doses of that and Apparently my liver enzymes are up, so there's a liver thing, and I don't know what to do about this pancreas thing. It was just so sad. The people were so mean to me. I would have yelled at them if I could have. And I like wanted to be like, who is that person? Like, I'm gonna like give you a bad review and report for this hospital. Uh, you wouldn't know if I was nonverbal because you didn't look at any of my history. What if I actually was nonverbal and I couldn't speak? 
you don't know because I couldn't talk and you wouldn't let my mom in and you're telling me that you would the three-year-old comes in with a broken arm or a suspected problem that they're just gonna let leave the three-year-old like they don't know everything that's going on they don't know what medication they take or you know what time it happened or what time you gave them medicine like the parents do and like I needed someone to advocate for me and to tell them what was going on and they would not let her while they're about to do all these wrong things and cause a problem because they won't look in my chart to know that I'm allergic to certain things and that they can't use this arm for anything and wouldn't look at my records. And it was just terrible. It was terrible. I had a good doctor, it was actually someone um, we've had multiple times there before that we know. Um, so at least that was good because this is so stressful. Like people don't believe you. Like, why were they asking? Why is that? Why am I not talking? And they were like, like making it seem like that, that 23 year olds being a, uh, uh, uh. and I was like, my pancreas is like doing crazy things right now. That's why I'm not talking to them after it was just really really bad and really sad about the care that I got there until they would finally listen to my mom and let her come in and then you know they would have given me like pain meds I I have reactions to I was like I can't have that are you kidding me like that's really bad and I have this stuff all on a list and it's all on the computer and they're too lazy to look up my history in their computer. I've had history there since I was like 16. Like, come on. You can't be that lazy. It was so stressful and it was so painful and I had so many pain meds. But it's only pain meds. They can't fix me there, so... We really have to figure out what's going on. Like, so my GI, GI, GI doctor can't really figure out what else to do with my pancreas and and elevated liver enzymes. And feels like he kind of gave up on me, at least right now. And they just not treating me at all with respect at all as a like a person and they told my mom when she came in to be with me that she could only be there if she didn't get in the way and she didn't um try to overpower the doctors and all these different things my mom's like i'm not doing that i'm here to tell you what's going on she needs to they can't do the medicine fast there are all these things that you cannot do with me and they don't know <sighs> sometime after five we got to leave but that was only pain medication and they won't give fentanyl as a iv medication because um, like if you use too much it's dangerous and like um people like selling it and like all that illegal stuff that we would never do but i'm just really upset and how i was not taken seriously and not appropriately treated and how they talk down so much to me when I was clearly having a severe medical problem. It's very, very hard. And since it's chronic, you just hope that it doesn't happen again today. And then, I don't know. That was my day yesterday. 
I was in the ER from like, I'd say like 9.30 to like, let's say 5.30 to be generous. And most of it was me screaming and yelling. And then I was just super upset after when I could speak and about like how I was like neglected and there was no reason to be like that. There was no re reason for them to be so cold and so derogatory towards me. I'm so glad to be home. It's a beautiful day. I'm gonna play with Sonoma and try to de-stress. So I thought I would just give an update on if that's what happened yesterday. I don't think I have any pictures. It was such a, a disaster and uh, we're gonna try to figure out what we can do tomorrow with one of my doctors. So hopefully I will get more information then. Thanks for listening and I'll see you later.